What is cost basis? Simply put, your cost basis is the price you paid for your shares. Since 2012, the IRS requires financial companies to report cost basis for shares sold from non-retirement accounts in mutual funds, if they were bought after the start date. To understand how your account is affected, it's important to understand the term covered. Covered refers to shares purchased after January 1, 2012, and are covered by the IRS rules. Any shares bought before that date are considered non-covered. Some companies may provide information on non-covered shares as a courtesy to customers. Why does cost basis matter at tax time? Cost basis determines if you have a taxable gain or loss. In other words, whether you made or lost money with your sale. If you sell your shares at a higher share price, you'll have a capital gain. If you sell your shares at a lower share price, you'll have a capital loss. Determining cost basis is fairly simple when you make only one purchase. But what happens when you have multiple purchases or reinvested distributions? This is where things become more complex. If you make multiple purchases, a formula must be used to determine your gain or loss. These are called cost basis calculation methods. There are several methods to choose from. Let's look at three common options. Average cost, first in, first out, and specific share identification. For each example, we'll use the same hypothetical scenario using five purchases and a sale of 100 shares, giving us a total of $1,500 redeemed. The first method, average cost, is only used for mutual funds. It simply averages the cost of all of your purchases. The first step is to add the purchase amounts to find the total paid. In this case, $5,500. Then divide that by the 500 shares purchased. That works out to $11 average per share. If we're selling 100 shares, the cost for those shares would be $1,100. Now let's use the same purchases with the first in, first out method. Here you assume the first shares purchased are the ones you're selling. In this case, that's $10 a share, multiplied by the 100 shares you are selling. Your cost basis is $1,000. For our last example, specific share identification, you choose the actual shares to sell by the date they were purchased. Let's say you want to sell 100 shares and you choose those bought on your second purchase, which were $13 a share. Multiply that by 100 shares and your cost basis is $1,300. Now that we've done the math, you can see how the method used affects your cost basis and your potential capital gain or loss. Remember, these outcomes are based on the simplified scenarios previously shown. Your cost basis and gain or loss will be determined by the actual transactions in your account. The method you choose should reflect what is best for your personal situation as determined by you and your tax advisor. Choosing a method is an important decision, so it's worth more time to investigate. Visit irs.gov for more information.